welcome to the Fiji Symposium in Cairo, Egypt, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Joao Cadete de Matos, who is the chairman of Anacom in Portugal. Uh, Mr. de Matos, th thank you very much indeed for joining us in the studio today. Thank you to be here also. It was a pleasure to meet the colleagues from central banks and from uh, the telecom regulators. Now, I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about uh, uh, a, a question that I've been asking everybody who's been sitting here pretty much. What will it take for the world's poorest people to prefer digital financial services over cash? And do you think that digital financial services will be enough for this to happen? I, I believe that people that today uh, are experimenting difficulties to access to credit or to use payment instruments that are really important to develop uh, their lives. Uh, one of the restrictions is the difficulties to access to a bank, to open a bank account, or to do uh, any kind of transaction using cash. Um, not using cash, but using the alternative uh, uh, instruments, namely cards and uh, bank accounts and so on. And the, the main reason for that is the level of income that is very low or the fact that they are uh, living in uh, isolated areas without banks, without this kind of solutions. So what the digital transformation is bringing to these people, is offering to these people, is the opportunity to have uh, an easy access uh, to these uh, kind of uh, instruments, financial instruments, financial service. And this is possible because it's more easy to develop internet worldwide than to develop a, a branch of a bank in uh, all the village, small village, all remote areas. Now, I wanted to ask you in terms of regulation and a subject I know you're very familiar with, uh, what innovations do you think are required in regulatory collaboration to create an environment uh, for digital financial services? I think that the first priority is that is needed that the, the central banks and uh, uh, telecom regulators start working together on this issue. Uh, because uh, traditionally the central banks are paying attention to the financial inclusion and the telecom regulators are developing the, the, the digital uh, inclusion. So today what we see is that we can benefit from the financial digital uh, inclusion. So, uh, combining the features and the benefits from uh, both uh, types of innovation, so financial innovation and digital innovation. And so this requires that these two bodies, these two types of institutions, start collaborating closely, uh, defining a common strategy and uh, defining a set of uh, instruments, a set of initiatives that can develop these kind of solutions. And what role do you think governments can play to enhance usage of digital financial services at the national level? Uh, I think that uh, the, the governments could also support this kind uh, of initiative, namely developing digital programs. Uh, I can give you the example in Portugal, where the Portuguese government developed a very uh, interesting and complete program of digitalization of all the aspects of the, the government. So the e-government is uh, a good help for this transformation. Finally, you've taken the time to uh, be here. I just wanted to find out why is this event important uh, to you in your calendar? I, I consider it uh, really important because uh, I remember when I discussed these matters with the Secretary General of uh, ITU, the relevance to work together, the central bank community and the uh, the telecommunications community. So I, I really appreciate this opportunity to be here with ITU, with the World Bank and the, the BIS uh, working together because this is crucial for the development of our society. Well, thank you very much for joining us in the studio and we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.